Hey everybody, I'm back with another list and today's list we're going to discuss when to reconnect with an ex. Now, just because I know that I'm going to get a million comments of you all saying the exact same thing, which is never, I totally get it and I agree, I would never go back to an ex once I'm done, but there are exceptions to the rule. There are times when things like this can work out. It's not all the time. You shouldn't bank on it if you break up. But I'm saying, on rare occasion, if this is possible, let's talk through the process. Number one, you know that you are not just trying to reconnect with them out of desperation. It's not just because you're lonely. It's not just because you miss being in a relationship and you hate being single. It's not just because you went to your best friend's wed wedding and it made you sad seeing them together, but you came alone. It's not because you're a certain age or you're afraid that you're never gonna get married or have babies. It has nothing to do with any kind of desperation. You can literally check that off the list with a clear conscience because I know some of y'all be lying to yourselves. I remember I used to be there before. Desperation can cause you to make some really bad decisions. And the unfortunate thing is that you suffer the consequence of those bad decisions. Nobody else does. So if you're lying to yourself and you're really only with this idiot because you just don't want to be by yourself and they haven't done any work or any accountability or anything, you will end up you will end up back where you started. You will end up broken up with again, or you will leave them again. Y'all will have a bunch of budding head, you know, it just, it's not gonna work. So if you are lying to yourself, it's, it's gonna affect you, not anybody else. Number two, you know that they're not just using you. Okay, you've talked to them and you've kind of felt things out and you know that they're not with you because they lost a job and they need your money. Um, their brother or their mom kicked them out and they need a place to stay. Something happened to their car, so now they need you to be the one to give them rides to work. Uh, you know they're not with you to get their basic necessities met. There's a storm coming and they need to take shelter, so now they're sucking up to you to get what they need. I'm not saying walk around and be suspicious of these men, but I'm saying walk around and be suspicious of these men. You are being nice to me out of nowhere you're trying to reconnect with me what's going on and what do you want I don't trust you a lot of women get caught up and trust me I, I think you're amazing I think you're a great person but a lot of women trick themselves into thinking he's with me because he loves me he's with me because he can't live without me honey he's with you because he needs a roof over his head he's with you because he's tired of sleeping on an air mattress in his cousin's basement he's with you because his car needs to be fixed and he can't afford to fix it he's with you because he got fired for showing up late at his job and you're a walking atm a woman once told me that an ex just popped up out of nowhere. First of all, we should be blocking these guys, but a woman once told me that an ex popped up out of nowhere just being all nice and, you know, sucking up to her. And upon further investigation and talking to him, she figured out that he was simply just tired of living at his brother's house and he wanted to live with her. At his brother's house, it was loud. Um, there was no privacy. He didn't really have his own space and he was just tired of the disorder. So he wanted to get back within her good graces to live with her. At first she thought, this is too good to be true. He's, he's out of nowhere, seems like he's changed. No, he just needed a roof over his head. So make sure you check that. Number three, they have apologized and have taken full accountability uh, for their actions. They can specifically name what they did. You can actively see and obviously see what they're doing differently. Um, they're not saying, well, I apologize, but you need to apologize too. It's not this like back and forth, you know, they're not apologizing through gritted teeth. They're not doing it begrudgingly. They're not, you know, being angry about it and saying, well, you know, I'll apologize, but you need to, it's not like anything like that. They're coming to you like a genuine adult and they are, you know what, I apologize, not just general, but I apologize for specific, specific, specific. And you can see the difference that they have made. You can see the ways that they have turned around in that specific area. Because I get it, he said he was sorry. 
But what did, what was he sorry for? Don't fall for that shit. I get it. He said he's changed. But you can't tell me how. You're just telling me all this shit that he said. But there's nothing specific and, and nothing different about him. He's the same exact person. All he said was he's sorry. Because he knows that that's all he's got to say in order to get back into your good graces. But we ne I need you to tell me specifics. What are you sorry for? And I need to see the changes that have been made in you over a long period of time. Which leads me to number four. It's not just all smoke and mirrors, but it's actual positive changes that have been made. I get it. Oh, oh, he gave you a dozen roses or your favorite flowers when he came back. He bought you your favorite candy. Oh, you guys went out to eat. Oh, you had a really good night together. He took you out of town. Um, okay, if you take all that out of the equation, is he basically the same person or is this all just a big you know smoke show and he's hoping that you fall for all these grand acts of, of kindness and you won't pay attention to the real issues that need to be worked on he he hopes that you won't pay attention to what caused you guys to break up in the first place. He wants you to fall for the flowers and the trips and the gifts and the and the good sex that you were having. And he wants you to be all loopy la la and forget about the real issues at hand. So don't come to me saying, oh, he got me flowers. Oh, he came to my job and got me candy. Oh, he's taking me out of town. How is he different? Is he different? Or is he just trying to manipulate you into not thinking about the real serious issues at hand. Number five, you both have communicated over a long period of time. You just didn't get a text on Monday and then Monday night y'all are back together. Y'all have talked over a long period of time so that you can not only get in and check off the things that I just mentioned, but you can see if these are actually real changes that have been made in his life and he's just not doing it for two weeks, hoping that you'll be dumb enough to fall for it so that he can take advantage of you again. And with these men, if they can get you back, if they can get you to fall for their tricks, they're going to treat you worse because hell, if you took up, if you, you know, were willing to allow their shit the first time, they can do anything this time. So you have actually given it time, given yourself time to think, you know, you've come down from the high of maybe y'all are infatuated with each other again, or maybe you're just excited and you can be level headed and allow him time to fuck up again, which most of them will. Number six, you're not living in a fairy tale. You don't think this is a movie where, oh, well, we really do need a two parent household. So we're going to get back together. I believe in black love or, or Christian love or whatever. So we should really get back together. Oh, my heart, my heart has been missing you. So we should get back together. Fuck all that shit. The biggest reason that women get into so much trouble with relationships is that we're stuck in this movie-like thinking about how relationships should go. I don't care if y'all are the same race, religion. I don't care if you're in a one-parent household and you wish it was a two-parent household and you think that y'all shouldn't break up. The, is the relationship working or not? How is he treating you? I need y'all to think realistically with your heads because romance and la-la whoop-de-woo isn't going to pay the bills. It's not going to fix any Anything when y'all are arguing in the middle of the night because y'all should not have gotten back together again what are the facts of the situation number eight you're not being heavily influenced by outside influences you're not worried about no damn biological clock how old you are your mom saying y'all need to get back together you can think with a level head if y'all get back together it will be your decision you're not worried about society family what everybody else got to say you can think with a level head and make a decision on your own and you ain't worried about nobody else. Number nine, he respects your boundaries. If you say, I don't want to get back together, he will leave you alone. If you say, I need time to think, he will give you time to think. Don't fall for the trap of, I told him to leave me alone and he sent me 12 dozen roses. What he's really showing you is I don't respect your boundaries. Good men will respect your no's, your not now's, I need times. So if he can't respect that, he is not, no, you do not need to get back together. He doesn't respect you. What do y'all think of the list?